Welcome to event coverage of the Ontario BMW GS Challenge. I'm Pat Gonzalez and joining me to call this event is the ever entertaining Clinton Smouth, the BMW GS Trophy Canadian Team Manager. Clinton, tell us about this program. Well, Pat, the BMW GS Challenge that we're hosting in Ontario is just one of three regional events where competitors can qualify to make it onto a three-person Canadian team. They will be sent all expenses paid to Mongolia in June of 2018, where teams from around the world will battle it out. It's an eight-day event with intensive daily stages, all adventure riding challenges. Well, if you want that free ride and to represent Canada to the motorcycle world, you first must qualify and to do that, you first must not only survive but thrive through the two-day Ontario qualifier before taking on your fellow countrymen at the Fundy Adventure National Championship at Adair Wilderness Lodge in New Brunswick, about an hour north of Moncton. Threatening skies here at Horseshoe Resort as we get set for the 10 riders who will battle through eight stage challenges here. Five events will be timed, three will be based on the penalty points, but Clinton, these will be very difficult conditions after all of this rain. Yes, Pat, the challenge has increased tenfold with all the mud and the water. We'll be assessing foot dabs, stalls, and falls, and some of the activities are timed, as you said, so if they make it up the hill at all, I'll be amazed. First, there were 25. We boil that down to the top 10, and now we'll see who are the top three riders who are gonna go on to the National GS Challenge in New Brunswick. I'm uh, Steve Boulanger, originally from Quebec City, and uh, now I'm living down in uh, Central America, Costa Rica. My name is Amir, Amir Dust uh, from Toronto. I'm riding the uh, 2014 um, uh, GS 800 Adventure. Morning, Steve Maxwell. I'm from Ottawa, riding a 1200 GS and having a good time out here at the GS Challenge. I'm doing the GS Challenge. I've had uh, a GS for just three years now and uh, having a blast here. It's great time. Learning lots and having a great time. Uh, Brent McKee, I'm from Arthur, Ontario. Uh, here to have a little bit of fun and get muddy. Hi, I'm Marc Chartrand. I'm from Chelsea, Quebec. Uh, just minutes from Ottawa. Here to have fun, here to get wet and hope to qualify. Hello, bonjour. I'm uh, from uh, Montreal. My name is Martin Emil, and the, uh, I'm here to uh, the great event for the GS Challenge. Cool. Yeah, I am Martin Ronowitzki. I live in London, Ontario, and I got a great time. I love it. I'm going to stay here. <laughs> Hi, Clint McBride, uh, out of Brantford, Ontario. Um, General Manager of Dual Sport Plus uh, Motorcycle Shop in Brantford. I'm here at the GS Challenge and uh, hoping to do well today. Jamie Jones, St. George, Ontario, Dual Sport Plus sponsor. There you see just how much water has fallen overnight here at the Horseshoe Resort as we get set for our first event, the Yak Turns. The Yak Turn was really exciting. You can see all the water. Imagine you've woken up in the morning in a herd of yaks and you've got to get out of there as quickly as possible. So this was a timed event through the water, through the sand and through the mud. And so Clinton, in this opening challenge, you want to get off to a good start, not have any kind of a, a problem. And right now we look at Jamie Jones out of Brantford, very skilled rider, doing a great job here on his 800 GS. Absolutely, Pat. To finish first, first you have to finish. So if you go too hard and fall in the mud, you're wasting time and energy to pick that bike back up. Jamie Jones completing his run. Here's another Brantford rider, Clint McBride, also on the 800 GS. As we watch him attack the course, you want to have as much speed around these pylons because it is a timed event, but not so much speed given how tricky the course is with all that rain. Exactly. You can see Clint's really using the throttle to help him get around those corners faster. Just a couple of pylons to go for him to complete his run. And of course, this event being timed on the clock, looks like he has a pretty clean run. Just visually doesn't look as fast as Jamie Jones went earlier. You're right. Here comes Archer on his 
Civic HP2, this bike is a lot longer wheelbase than any BMW made for off-road, so it's a little harder on tight turns. Arthur Ronawecki, the racing truck driver, doing a great job. Boy, does he have a great attitude for this kind of adventure riding as you see him working his way through the lake, as we call it here, in the Yak Turns competition. Having a little bit of a problem there, that's gonna cost them some time. Yes, you can see, Pat, now it's getting all chewed up. So Amir had some trouble on that tight turn, the front end swap. So there's an advantage of going first in some sections, sometimes not. But this is definitely harder as the guys progress through. Mark Chartrand out of Montreal on the F800 GS. Again, a couple of our riders here from Quebec. There is a qualifying event in Quebec, but they've decided to come to try to qualify via this Ontario event. And right now, Chartron having a pretty good run. He is on one of the F800 GS machines, having a little bit of a difficulty through that particular section. But Clinton, it seems like the F800 GSs are a little more nimble through these tight pylon solemn course. Yeah, the smaller, lighter bike is definitely easier to get through loose terrain. But the big 1200 has got gobs of torque. It will throw mud and power that bike through. Ottawa Steve Maxwell on one of those R1200 GSs. Ryder having a pretty good run on the big bike as we have Martin Amel, the second of our Quebec riders. Amel here on his G650X. This bike is over 10 years old and a rider who does an awful lot of off-road riding. So let's have a look at the results of our Yak Turn Challenge. Jamie Jones with the win, 45.5 seconds. Martin Amell, Clint McBride, Arthur Ronawecki, and then Mark Chartron rounds out our top five. Getting set for the second of our challenges here at the GS Challenge. This one, the garage in Clinton, this calls for a tremendous amount of balance, throttle, and clutch control. Yeah, it's all about going slow in this one, Pat. The riders must be able to ride the clutch to control their speed, dab of rear brake to rein it in, transfer their weight to the high side of the bike, and have their eyes up. Here is Jamie Jones, a rider with a great deal of trials experience. He puts that to good use with a pretty good run here, but I think he did have some penalty points. Yeah, just a few at the end, Pat. Clint McBride from Brantford, Ontario, aboard that 2014 800 GS, one of the lighter of the BMW GS machines. Here he is running through this floor plan, if you will, of the garage with some fictitious walls there. Not sure if he got a penalty there. Looks like he may have grazed one of those walls here on the floor plan as he's about to complete his run. And now we look at our overall winner, Steve Maxwell takes challenge number two. And let's have a look at the results. There's Steve Maxwell, just three penalty points. Jamie Jones with six points in second. Clint McBride, Arthur Ronawecki, and then Brent McKee rounds out our top five. And we look at our overall leaderboard after two of eight events. It is Jamie Jones with a win and a second place finish. He is your leader, McBride, Maxwell, and the rest of the top 10. Getting set for stage challenge number three, the trials course in Clinton. Looks like this will be a very, very difficult challenge. Those riders with trials experience have a big advantage. You're right, Pat. The slow speed, precision riding is the skill sets here. And here are the riders taking the traditional walk of the course to see exactly what they'll be facing. It'll be a lot easier walking it than it will be riding it. Let's have a look at our overall points leader through the first couple of challenges. Jamie Jones aboard his 800 GS and looks like he has a solid run going here. A rider with a great deal of trials experience. Yeah, you can see how challenging and how tight it is, Pat. This is one of the toughest sections. It's just a culvert lying in the sand. 
nicely over that obstacle. That's Jamie Jones, the overall points leader, looking to add to his lead. Now we look at the rider. Oh, problem there for Clint McBride. That is going to cost him an awful lot of points. As Clint McBride came into this third challenge, sitting second behind Jamie Jones, and that's going to put him a little bit further back. You can see, Pat, that it's not all about speed. It's really important to keep your eyes up, and you'll see Arthur oh, what just slipped off the teeter-totter there. And that is going to cost him as he tries to move up here in challenge number three, and this course getting quite uh, a bit rutted. Now we go with Quebec rider Mark Chartron. Good job. Again, Chartron looking to qualify here at this Ontario event, and he has a problem in that uh, same teeter-totter section. Yes, and Mark will struggle through it. Once he got past the teeter-totter, he really started moving through with power. And as it gets more and more chewed up, as more riders go through, the challenge goes up. Well, with all those overnight rains, the course is getting chewed up in a big way. When he gets right off of that log section, as we look at the results of challenge number three, the trials course, it is Jamie Jones with the win. Arthur Ronawecki, followed by Clint McBride, Steve Maxwell, and Brent McKee. So Jamie Jones has won two of the first three challenges here at our BMW Motorrad GS Challenge. And look at those results, Pat. Jamie Jones, one single foot dab is all we could catch him on. Second place, had 10 more points. Getting set for challenge number four, the logs. This is the only challenge where the engine is turned off and everybody uses the same GS800. Kickstands, anything. And so we look at the first of our competitors, Clint McBride, as he goes for it. As he tries to push it across, that will not work. He scatters the logs. Now he's got to pick up that motorcycle that's sitting on top of those logs. And he will have to get it across and in between those yellow cones. And he does complete the run. But this one is timed, and I think that's going to cost him. It will, and it did, Pat. But what was fascinating is all of the competitors were sequestered. Here's a different approach push the logs towards the big one, and then muscle it over. Much easier. Mark Chartron parked his bike, arranged the logs, and that was pretty good technique. Very smart. Here's some of the other riders in the detention area. They're not allowed to look at the course, as we see Eric Russell of the Fundy Adventure Rally. That's where our national finals will be held. And now we look at Kevin Beatty. And he's going to try to ride it off. Again, the engine is not running. And he scatters those logs, and he's hung up on those logs. But look at the strength and determination. Just muscled that bike through. Well, here is one that uh, may get the award for most creative. He is going to play lumberjack and just push those logs away. And now gets back on his motorcycle. This is a mere Durst. The Scottish technique, as we call it. He will push and paddle through the cones. A little different approach. That was what was fascinating to me, Pat, is watching the brain work of different riders to figure out how to do this. Here is our points leader, Jamie Jones. And it looks like Jones is limping a little bit. He'll put the last of the logs in position. This was painful for me to watch, Pat, because Jamie broke his leg three months ago. So the fact that he's even here is amazing. But to see him pushing a heavy bike was remarkable. And now we look at Arthur. And Arthur does not have a good time there as he just tried to bully the bike over the logs. And now we look at Brent McKee. And he is going to push, trying to, no, he's going to stop and he's going to adjust the logs. And this is a technique, Pat, that we would use in adventure riding. The tree's down, you can't get over the, the height of it. Get a couple of other logs or rocks and make a little ramp. Now he's going to back it up here. He's going to push the bike, try to get it up and over. He does through the pylons to complete his run. 
Now we get set for Martin Amel. Here's a different kind of technique. He's found some room between the logs and the pylons, and that could very well be our fastest run. Now, was that run legal uh, based on the rules of this challenge? As we look at the officials there having a bit of a discussion. Well, you can see Patrice is laughing because he's almost congratulating Martin in taking advantage of the rules. We just said you have to be between those pylons. He only had a couple of inches there, but he used it and it gave him the best time path. And look at that time, 8.8 .8 seconds. Kevin Beatty, Chartron, Rona Wecky, and Clint McBride in your top five. Not a good challenge for our overall points leader, Jamie Jones. What'd you think of that run? That was good. Good thinking on that guy. Yeah, thank you. How did you come up with the strategy? Uh, I closed my eye and pushing the harder I can. <laughs> so as we reach the halfway point, it is Jamie Jones on top, but with that seventh place finish, it is really tightened up. In fact, we've got a tie for second between Arthur Ronawecki and Clint McBride followed in fourth by Martin Amel. Then we've got a tie for fifth. Mark Chartrand, Steve Maxwell, both at 120 points. Brent McKee, Kevin Beatty, Amir Dorst, and Steve Boulanger round out the top 10. We move on to challenge number five, the pit. And it is Jamie Jones with the lead as we go to one of the most difficult challenges on the day. Difficult is right, Pat. This is really technical. Not only is there deep sand, mud, water, but we've got very steep hills with wet, slippery grass. And there you see, you don't want to lay the motorcycle down there in that circular mud pit as you were able to uh, get through that section and demonstrate to the riders exactly what they would be facing. Now we look at Arthur Ronawecki, currently sitting just 15 points back. And he's got a problem here, Clinton, hung up on that big rock right in the middle of the turn. Yeah, I think, Pat, it was a little target fixation that hung him up. Now he's struggling on the hill. And the bike goes down, so Ronawecki needing to get some help to push that big BMW 1200RS up to the top of the hill so he can get going again. Now, this is a treacherous section with all of that rain. This downhill grass section is very, very difficult. What are you doing in terms of brake? Is it more front than rear brake? It is more front, Pat. You can see the back end slid out there because he had too much rear brake. All your weight transfers forward. And now he makes his way into that tiger pit and it looks like it's almost three feet deep. It is, he almost watered out here. And here he is, he's got his foot down, that'll be another point deduction. Arthur Ronawecki looking to complete this run and move up on Jamie Jones. He's just 15 points back as we said, but he's losing a lot of time and points here in the pit. You can also think, Pat, of the energy it's taken to pick the bike up, to keep going, to push off with your legs when it gets stuck. There he is, there's a at least one, maybe two more deductions and another one there. So he's gonna have quite a few deductions. And here's Steve Belanger. Watch this, Pat. He doesn't quite have the momentum at the top. Oh, and a fall right on the rock. Oh, that's gotta hurt. We'll see if there's any damage to the motorcycle. And now we go to Clint McBride, tied for second with the Rona Wecky. And there are some penalty points that he's gonna get. Every time he dabs that left foot going through this section, it's gonna cost him another point, but that's better than putting it into the water, crashing the bike and losing five points. Exactly. But the secret here is keep your head up, keep that momentum going. And he will complete the run. Now we go with Brent McKee as he is having a bit of a problem here now into that tiger pit. There you can see how deep it is and he just submarines that BMW into the tiger pit. Now how do you pick up that motorcycle with much difficulty as we saw there, but uh, there's five points and that I think is gonna really cost him here. It will, but amazingly, that bike didn't water out. He fired it up and got it out of there. As we go to Kevin Beatty, here's his uphill run cleanly through there and now the downhill and he's about to make that right hand turn into the tiger pit. 
And there's another rider caught out by that treacherous tiger pit. It's really tough in there, Pat. You need momentum, but if you're going too fast, you'll lose that front end, as Steve and Kevin both illustrated. But again, that is going to cost them an awful lot of points. As uh, Clinton, you were right there trying to give him a bit of a hand to complete the run. Yeah, we look at it philosophically, Pat. The time has been ticking for so long. He's out of the running. Let's help him get out of there. Camaraderie is part of this. Well, of course, that uh, tiger pit got a whole lot deeper. And here is uh, problems for Kevin Beatty as Beatty once again lays it down. That's another five-point deduction. And you can imagine, Pat, fatigue is now setting in. He's dropped it a couple of times. It's getting heavier and heavier each time he picks it up. And now we look at Mark Chartrand as he begins his run uphill. Now down through the bottom of the hill, preparing to run through that tiger pit, Clinton. And oh, he's got a problem. Leans the motorcycle over. Luckily, he got it out of the pit, lays it down on the grass. This will be a little bit easier than trying to pull it out of that mud pit. Exactly, Patty. Had the momentum, has just lost the front end right at the end, but he's continuing. Mark Chartron looking to put in a solid run here. The Montreal rider aboard that 2015 F800 GS as he is about to complete his run and we'll see where he ends up in terms of uh, demerit points. Now we go back to Amir Durst out of Toronto. As we said, uh, perhaps the most inexperienced of the riders here in our top 10 from yesterday going into the final qualifying, but uh, doing a pretty good job here on that uphill section. And now he begins the run into the Tiger Pit. We'll see if he's able to get through there, and he does. That's a great job for a rider with just four years of experience. And now we go back to Jamie Jones, and Jones is having a bit of a problem. Yeah, Jamie had almost the right momentum, but again, the front end and those big ruts the other guys have made. But look, Pat, at the line he's taking. He went where other riders didn't, which made it a lot easier, less ruts. So Jones completes the run, and we look at Martin Amel on the 650. Is the 650 the bike to have here? It's very light, the lightest of all of the motorcycles as he prepares to run through that Tiger Pit, and he gets through there very quickly. He may be on uh, one of the better runs here this afternoon in Challenge 5. Yeah, he's definitely got skill, but it is a little easier for him on the smaller bike path. And so our results of Stage 5 of the BMW GS Challenge, the win goes to Martin Amel, just 14 demerit points, Clint McBride with 16 in second, Jamie Jones, a better run there, finishes third, Arthur Ronawecki, and then Mark Chartron rounds out our top five. Challenge number six, the tree slalom coming up, and this is a course that has been made much more difficult with the rains overnight. Some of these trails were pretty dry yesterday. They're certainly not so today. Absolutely, Pat. I would guess the timing doubled. For instance, you'll see Mark here, does really well until he loses the front end. It's very greasy. Oh, you can see him just plowing that motorcycle as he went through that section. Now he tries to pick it back up. Chartron, this is going to cost him an awful lot of time. If you're quick, you should be able to get through this in about a minute. And it looks like he's going to be well over a minute. He is rolling again. But that one fall there, I think, is going to cost him any kind of a top finish here in this challenge number six. And here's Kevin Pat on an R1200 GSA. Tentative going in, but although the time is ticking, he's not dropping it because it's extremely greasy. Kevin Beatty out of Coldwater, Ontario. Now we go with Arthur Ronawecki. And Arthur has been putting in some solid rides here today and looking to uh, pick up another top finish that might move him a little bit closer to our overall points leader, Jamie Jones. And we look at Brent McKee on his R1200 GSA. That bike has got to be a handful through these slick trails as he makes his way through that hairpin left-hand turn now to the right and having to put his foot down to 
try to balance that motorcycle through that slick turn. Now we go with Clint McBride on the F800 GS. Clint is right there. Remember, the top three riders at the end of it all, they'll go on to the national final in New Brunswick. And here's Jamie Jones. You'll see the trial skills and enduro skills come into play here, Pat. Speed is good, but he slows down when it gets greasy. And remember, he is not 100% having broken his leg just four months ago, but he does take the win here. Less than a minute, 58.1. Rona Wecky, followed by McBride, Amel, and Brent McKee, your top five. And so after six of eight events in the BMW Motorrad GS Challenge, it is Jamie Jones out of Brantford, Ontario, on top with 255 points. Clint McBride right behind at 235. Arthur Rona Wecky, sits third, then Martin Amel from Quebec fourth, Mark Chartrand in fifth, Brent McKee, Kevin Beatty, Steve Maxwell, Amir Durst, and Steve Boulanger round out the top 10. Now the ravine challenge, Pat, was really exciting. Again, because of the rain, the degree of difficulty went way up. Points leader Jamie Jones won his fourth stage challenge of the day with a solid run. Clint McBride came home in second. Arthur Ronawecki was third. Brett McKee in fourth. And Martin Amell still with a shot of becoming one of the top three riders. So we go to our final stage challenge, zigzag, where the riders face a daunting task of getting through a very tight, tight section here through the woods. Yes, Pat, this was a section where the participants cursed me afterwards. Physically, these bikes don't have the turning radius to get around these tight corners. So the rider's got to be creative. Put your foot down, lean it over, and launch it to spin the back tire around. Or do the seven-point turn. And now we go with Clint McBride, currently sitting second within striking distance of the overall points leader, Jamie Jones, through this final zigzag challenge. Now look at how tight this is, Pat. It's so easy if you don't have the momentum to get hung up on those pine logs and the mud that's just underneath the needle. And now we look at our overall points leader, Jamie Jones, going after his fifth stage win as he works his way through on that F800 GS. Jamie Jones out of Brantford, Ontario. He's been very, very consistent in the top five. Oh, oh. and he lays it over. Didn't break the tape, but now he's got to get back under that tape. That's going to be five seconds if you break the tape. And right now he's trying to get back onto that motorcycle and continue, but he's losing some precious time here as he chases some of the earlier faster times. Yes, you can see what falling does broke his rear turn signal, but I would have just given up. And the results of stage challenge number eight, zigzag, the win goes to Arthur Rona Wecky on that big BMW 1200. It is Jamie Jones home in second. That should be enough to give him the overall championship here. Mark Chartron, Martin Amel, Clint McBride in fifth. As we look at the overall point standings of the GS Challenge here in Ontario, Jamie Jones with the overall win, 350 points. Arthur Rona Wecky with his win here in the final stage moves up to second, just 10 points clear of Clint McBride, who will hold on to that third and final ticket to the BMW Motorrad GS Challenge National Finals coming up in New Brunswick. And there's a look at our top three riders, Jamie Jones, along with the second place finisher there, Arthur Ronawecki, and of course, Clint McBride coming home in third. All three of those riders getting congratulations from Eric Russell with the Fundy Adventure Rally. They'll be heading to New Brunswick to do battle to see if maybe one of those riders will be heading to Mongolia in June of 2018. It's just been a tremendous day here at the Horseshoe Valley Resort.